my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling, darling Clementine. She was a mainliner, a 69er. Her name was Dinah, Dinah Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I must have embarrassed you because you brought your friends. I'm gonna line a hundred men up against the wall. I bet a hundred dollars I can bang them all. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to embarrass you, but I just heard a new Viceroy commercial. A guy says, hey, you down there in the water, are you a deep sea diver? He says, no, you schmuck, I'm drowning. <laughs> Can't sit here. <laughs> I heard a story about the honeymoon couple who wanted to fly United, but the stewardess wouldn't let them. <laughs> this is a story about a high school girl who went to spend time with her uncle on a farm. She gets up early one morning to milk the cows. She offered to milk them. So her uncle says, where did you learn how to milk cows? She says, I learned in high school. Two hours later, her uncle goes out and he sees what's going on. He finds her stroking the cow's others with the pail underneath. He says, you got to grab and pull. She says, yeah. She says, don't you have to get them excited first? <laughs> Clean that one up pretty good, right? Another story here that's a little risque. Play an Undertaker song. <laughs> bum, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Story about a guy, an Undertaker, they brought a stiff into him and he couldn't close the coffin because the guy had a chatrul. Closing his neighbor, he says, get a load of this. I can't close the coffin. Did you ever see anything this big? The guy says, what's so great about that? I got the same thing. The undertaker says, that big? He says, no, not that big. That dead. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the greatest story you ever heard, if you clap. And listen, it's about Boris Tomaszewski. Those of you who ever heard of Boris Tomaszewski, he was the Jewish John Barrymore, the greatest actor of all. And this is a true story. He's walking down 2nd Avenue in New York City, Stanley, with a high hat, a cane, a mean collared coat and spats. He was a star of the 2nd Avenue Theater. In front of him was walking a little broad. He gave her the wink. She figured the way this guy is dressed, she must make a million, make a great score. Took her up to his apartment. An hour and a half they came down. The guy put his hand in his pocket at the Zoe. She figured this is it. Took it out, handed her a ticket. She says, what's this? I am the Boris Tomaszewski, the great Jewish actor. This is a ticket for my show. She says, with this, I'll get bread. He says, you want bread? Go bang a baker. <laughs> it will tell about the 90-year-old man that's dying in a hospital. He's dying, so they will have to feed him through a rectal tube. So he calls the nurse. He says, could I please have another tube? She said, what do you need two tubes? He says, you've been so nice to me. I want you should have dinner with me before I die. <laughs> I think that's the greatest story I ever heard. I wonder what they had for a four spice. Which means an appetizer. <laughs> I heard one about an old man that married a beautiful young girl. 
had a heart attack. They take him from his office to the hospital. His wife gets a call. She runs to the hospital. She says, darling, what happened to you? He says, don't talk. I got a few minutes to live. He says, I got a bummer partner. He says, I got money in the vault. See, everything is coming to you. She says, honey, how can you talk about money at a time like this? What can I do for you? He says, you can take your fingers off the oxygen tank so I can breathe a little bit. <laughs> Anybody want me to be my distributor in South Africa? With the Mau Maus? Even Tregor got three chances, right? Did you hear what she said? If you thought the jury was hung, you should have seen the doc. <laughs> now they tell me Eichmann wants to set letter court. That's another schmuck, right? I have another story here that's a little risque. It's my original story. When the Jewish girl was going out with a nice fella and her mother says, why don't you bring him home? She says, how can I bring a fella home? Play a Jewish song on to submit. She says, Ma, how can I bring a fella home? The house is so dirty, it stinks. The mother says, I'll wash everything. The daughter says, you'll wash the writing off the toilet wall. She says, Ma, please. The mother says, I'll wash everything off, but screw Eichmann stays. <laughs> Very cute, Stella. I don't want to embarrass anybody. It just works out that way. You hear about the French chef who likes to eat his tomatoes? <laughs> it's a great story. Italian man was operated on. His wife, Rose, is wringing her hands like this. Finally, the doctor walks over. He says, Mrs. Scampanelli, we hate to tell you this, but your husband is, is in bad shape. She said, I got no money. I said, well, if you'll permit us, we do this medic operation, you know, on TV. We'll pay you for it. We'll do the operation for nothing. She said, that's all right They're with me. She said, I got a nothing to wear on television. They bought her a dress. They make her hair do the whole for cockpit bit. Finally, she's on TV. They're interviewing her. The head doc walks over and he says, Mrs. Scampanelli, we hate to tell you this. But your husband died. The operation was not successful. She looks in the mirror. She says, Noah, well, what are you going to do? That's a show business. <laughs> Buffalo's room. And I'll show you a home. Here you came. I was alone. And it ain't easy, I'll tell you. And then Night right after dark, we'll goose each other in the park. If Sherman's horse can take it, so can you touch. <laughs> Miss the toilet last night. Went all over the floor. I cleaned it up with my toothbrush. <laughs> Don't brush my teeth anymore. <laughs> Those of you who've never been to Florida don't know about the parties we have down there. But we do have very swanky parties in Miami Beach. We have what they call nudist masquerade parties. I went in with my varicose veins as a road map. <laughs> the guy that took me walked in backwards as a Parker House road. Two o'clock in the morning in the Eaton Rock Hotel. A guy calls downstairs and he says, send up some pepper right away. Clerk says, two o'clock in the morning, the dining room is closed. What do you want with pepper? The guy says, what does anybody want with toilet pepper? <laughs> <laughs> and I met an idiot at the Fountain Blue Pool 
I asked him about the water. I said, the water cold? He says, it's lukewarm. I went in the water, it was freezing. I said, what do you mean it's lukewarm? He looks at me and says, it looked warm to me. <laughs> This is the greatest about the little three-year-old boy. He says to the two-year-old girl, could I please creep into your pants? And she says, why? He says, because mine are full of schmutz. <laughs> you gonna put that on the record? <laughs> and you know the rich, they never know nothing, right? Even in Florida. I always say the rich never understand the language. One came in the other night, and she's, I was talking to the Yiddish. She said, I'm very sorry, I don't know what you're talking. I said, where'd you get the accent? She says, I travel, you know how they are. <laughs> you ever meet those buttes? Like the two women I met in Paris? One says to the other, she says, I've been here 10 days, I haven't been to the Louvre once. The other one says, don't worry, mama, it must be the water here. <laughs> Roses are red and ready for plucking. I just finished high school. I'm ready for Bryn Mawr College. <laughs> See the one about the woman that ran the drugstore? She says to the guy, give me a bottle of poison. I want to kill myself. The guy knows she's a nut. He gave her a bottle of castor oil. She drank it. She lay down on the floor. She says, I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> he says, you'll crap out first. <laughs> I have a story that's a little risque. <laughs> I heard a story that's so dirty, I blushed when I heard it. I swear, Stella, now you know me. Nothing bothers me. When somebody comes right out and tells me a dirty story, I cringe. <laughs> I cringe. because I can't stand dirty words. It's a story, a great story, Stella, about a man who sent his wife to the country for the weekend. Ever hear it? Never. She's a good wife. She said, I prepared you hamburgers. So, she's away. What does he know? He's watching Wyatt or he doesn't know what the hell he's eating. He's eating dog food for three days. She comes home, she discovers it. She says, you know you're gonna die. He says, I feel good. Why should I die? She called the doctor on the phone. The doctor said, of course he'll die. It's not for human beings. It's dog food. The next week, she went to the doctor all dressed in black. The doctor said, I told you he died from the dog food. She said, he didn't die from the dog food. The doctor says, what do you mean you didn't die from the dog food? She said, he was lying on the couch, licking himself, fell off and broke his neck. <laughs> Everybody raves about dogs. No dog like my dog. My dog is really housebroken. He only does it in the house. It's like the woman who lost her pet dog and called the cops. The cop says, lady, your dog isn't lost. He must be in heat. She says, give him whatever he wants. Heat, steak, lamb chops, whatever he wants. He says, no, lady, your dog wants to be bred. He says, give him bread, give him rye, give him pumpernickel. He says, lady, your dog wants to be mated. She says, all right. She says, oblige me. She says, I always lied to the police dog. <laughs> Stop coughing, reverse it. <laughs> I want you to know I don't get paid in the round table. It's an audition for the police department. <laughs> it's happened to me Friday night. She met a broad, she had varicose veins. She was heckling me and I said, Madam, you don't have varicose veins, do you? She said, I should say not. I said, that's because you're not on your feet too much. <laughs> you must hear this, that my, my niece's son is 16 years old. He saw me in the round table and he says, 
Aunt Bella is very unique. <laughs> I thought he'd call me a eunuch. Ty, there's the greatest musician in the world, Ty Glenn. Come over here. Ty Glenn, honey. If I could blow like him, I'd make $20 million. I met you the other night, but you never had your organ with you, did you? <laughs> Since then, I've been dying to play with his organ. I used to play a bass fiddle, too. I was billed as the only woman living with a wooden box. It's a hell of a thing to have between your legs. It looks like a Cuban killer. Very few things crack me up. A killer is a rupture, honey. Every broad thing, love is a many splintered thing. <laughs> Greatest giver in the world. What do you got for me, Daddy? <laughs> and it better be something better than what I'm used to. Because my husband has a 16 inch recording of Bobby Darren. <laughs> the next story is a little risque. About two girls who were roommates. One always was buying new panties, the other one told her about a doctor who would tattoo a pair of panties on her. And in the end, it would be cheaper. So the other girl says, how much does it cost? She says, $25. She says, I'll go. She goes to the doctor, he finishes. She says, how much is it? He says, $50. She says, 50, you only charge my girlfriend 25. Well, he says, I went in the hole on that one. She says, well, listen, buddy, you can take a licking on this one. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, but I should be home in bed with a doctor. <laughs> you have another story that's a little risque. When a guy goes up to a house, he takes his son with him. The son says, how could you do this to mother? Father says, for two bucks, does it pay the barber? <laughs> it's a cute story. But the story is about a woman I wanted to go on a diet. She went to the doctor. She says, doctor, I have a very big stomach. I would like a slight exercise. The doctor said, every night, lie on your back. Try to raise your legs. Don't bend your knees. At the end of three months, your legs will be up to your head and your stomach will disappear. And as I took a lick me, I'm a shigana. She laid like a nut with her legs up to her head. Her husband walked in. He said, why don't you comb your hair and brush your teeth? You're getting to look more like your mother every day. <laughs> I heard a story the other day where the woman who went to a psychiatrist. Doctor says, what's your problem? She says, I got four homes, I got six Cadillacs, I got 42 furs. Doctor says, what's your problem? She says, my husband only makes 60 bucks a week. <laughs> about Donald Duck who divorced his wife because her quack was too big? <laughs> I like stories that are plain and cute. Because I dig Mrs. Mrs. Riley when she says to Mrs. Cohen, what does it look like when your husband is circumcised? Mrs. Cohen says it's not very different. It looks like a Yule Brunner with a tight neck sweater. <laughs> You know, I found out what a royal flush was. It's a princess taking the deuce. <laughs> you know what a full house is? The king and queen in one room with all the kids watching. <laughs> I have another story here that's a little risque. They call this a show business story. 
It's about a guy that went up to a booking agent's office. He says, I have the greatest act in the world. The guy says, what do you do that's so sensational? He said, I sing for my rectum. The guy says, you do? He says, let me see. The guy drops his pants, messes the whole floor. The agent says, what, are you nuts or something, mister? He says, what are you doing to a $6,000 rug? The guy says, I had to clear my throat, didn't I? <laughs> How come you do me like you do, 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 do? How come you do me like you do? How come you do me like you do me? I ain't done nothing to you. Now you can treat me right and you can let me be. Cause I could do much better to you than what you're trying to do to me. How come you do me like you do me? How come you do me like you do? Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed the first portion, we thank you. We're going to have an intermission now.